Hi guys and welcome to another video in my series. Uh, I'm Darren, otherwise known as Mascuro, and it is really good to see you. Now, if you haven't already done so, can you do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel? No one really watches mass videos, and so just clicking that subscribe button just lets me know that someone out there is watching. If you can spread the word to your mates as well, that'd be greatly appreciated. My aim is to make maths fun and interesting and easy to understand, and hopefully uh, a lot of people already think that is true. So uh, watch the video and let me know what you think if you are watching on YouTube by leaving me comments uh, and um, yeah, just whatever you can do to help. Okay, so this video today is on circles and circumference and exact values and all sorts of stuff. So the learning objectives are important. By the end of the lesson, we should be ticking off what you actually know. So. Uh, do you know what the important parts of a circle are? Can you find the circumference of a whole circle? Can you use exact values and know what exact values are? Uh, arc length, sectors, and perimeters of these things, right? So it's building on the stuff you would have done in previous year levels of maths. And as I say, the theory for much of what you do is relatively the same. We just make the questions that little bit more complicated. All right, so we're building on circumference, diameter, radius, minus sector, major sector, and chords of a circle. So if we have a circle, hopefully we are aware that the distance from the center to the edge is the radius. And we know that the distance from one side of the circle to the other, also passing through the center, is my diameter. All the way around the edge is called the circumference, uh, which is also the perimeter, which is a previous video I've just recorded from my channel and my website. Now, if you haven't already done so, head over to maskaroo.com, sign up, absolutely free to do so, and there you can download lesson notes. There's uh, lessons sorted by textbook. You can find uh, exam style questions, all sorts of stuff over there. So hopefully you'll find it useful. Uh, minor sector. Now, in this situation, drawing a different diagram, a minor sector is basically nothing more than a pie slice. Oh, pie, so hungry once again, yeah? So this one here is a minor sector, and outside here is what we would call a major sector, because major means like really important, yeah? A major sector. And sectors we're gonna be dealing with to help us find perimeters and all that type of stuff. All you need to know for a minor sector or a major sector is the radius, and some sort of angle. Now notice there I did that Greek symbol called theta or theta um, that uh, a lot of us use to just stand for an angle. But it doesn't have to be that, it can be all sorts of letters. And there's a chord, bring, yep, I thankfully don't play guitar or, or any musical instrument for a moment. And a chord is a line that joins from one side of a circle to another not necessarily passing through my diameter. So that's a chord, bring, <laughs> yeah, no, wasn't good the first time. So, summary books are awesome. If you can actually download these notes and cut stuff out, then they're there for you to actually do what you can, yeah? So, as I say, major sector, minor sector, radius, uh, diameter, there is circumference all the way around the edge, and you can print out that previous diagram for things like chords and, and what have you, but use your summary book if you're allowed one. Alternatively, sorry, you just gonna have to put it to memory. Finding the circumference of a circle, and again, I'm just gonna recap this stuff because we should have done it in previous years, but if it's the first time you're watching this video, hey, welcome, really good to see you. How do we find the circumference or perimeter of a circle? As I said before, we need a formula, all right? Now, formulas in maths are really, really important. Sometimes they're critical, they help us shortcut a load of stuff. Other times, not so helpful because they actually stop us from thinking. But in this situation, our circumference can be given by two times pi, times the radius of the circle. So the radius is from the center to an edge. Now, they can also give you the diameter. And if you remember, the diameter is goes from one side of a circle to the other through the center. It must go through the center, otherwise it's known as a chord. Now, we know that we can actually rewrite this formula as two times r times pi. Now, why? Because what's one times two times three? Waiting, six. What's two times three times one? A six. What's one times three times two? Six. Now, all the time, I think about things as having kissy kisses between them, otherwise times is, and when all of these things are kissing together, ooh, a mental image, uh, we can swap around the order. Doesn't actually matter. And so in this situation, to go from that line there to that line there, I've just change the order. Now, why is that important to me? Because we also know that the diameter of a circle is equal to two times r. So where I see two times r, I can replace it with d. And so my circumference is diameter times pi. And weirdly for maths, we normally write that 
as pi times diameter. So there are actually two formulas that are useful to us. Um, they give us the same answer that either circumference is pi times diameter or uh, circumference is two times pi times radius. Now, it's really, really important that you know that this is for a whole circle because when we start dealing with sections of circles, we need to use that formula, but think of it in terms of a fraction of, right? Now, we can find answers in exact form and decimal form, and that's really important that you read the questions. All right, so find the circumference of this circle and the perimeter of this sector in exact form and correct to two decimal places. Now, the sector's coming up in just a moment, so let's just deal with the circle first. Find the perimeter or the circumference of the circle, right? So we know the circumference of a circle is two times pi times radius. So formula, I always start with formula, then we substitute. So circumference is equal to two times pi times three. Now, because I know I can rewrite this, they're all kissing together and I can write this, then I can write that as two times three times pi, and I know that two times three is six, and so we can write our circumference as six pi. Now, believe it or not, that's what we call an exact value, and an exact value doesn't have any decimals in it whatsoever. Now, because pi has decimal places to infinity and beyond, well, basically, we're allowed to just leave the pi sign as it is. So believe it or not, as I've just said, that there is an exact value, and it is a perfectly acceptable way of leaving an answer. Now, how do we go from an exact value to a decimal? We fire up my cast calculator. So doing that, I would now type in six times pi. Now, you may not have this type of calculator with you. You may just have a smaller sort of non-CASIO, sorry, non CAS, doesn't matter, same, same, you'll find the values or the buttons on there, and I press enter, and that gives me that the circumference of my circle is equal to 18 point, now the decimal place is 85, because it says correct to two decimal places, and we would need to make sure that we know what our units were, and they were centimeters, and there we go. So I've now written my answer as exact, and then decimal, and notice, exact, easy to do, and then just bang it in my calculator to get my decimal representation. <sighs> Find the arc length of a circle. Okay, find the circumference of the whole circle and multiply it by the fraction of the circle we have. Now this is it. We have a sector here. We have a whole pi that has been cut into a section. And because we've only got this fraction of my whole circle, then that's what we do. We work out the fraction of the circumference of the whole circle, all right? So, when you're doing this, I always say, let's find the circumference of the whole circle first. So the circumference of the whole circle is given by two times pi times radius. Now it's not always easy to see which one the radius is, but I'm telling you for sectors, whenever they have this line here, that there is always my radius. So the circumference of the whole circle is two times pi times two. And I'm gonna leave this in an exact value and write that as four pi, that's for my whole circle. But I don't want a whole circle because I've only got 80 degrees of it. And this is where I love the idea of the language of mass because I can now say the circumference of my sector, and I'm gonna write circumference of my sector, is a fraction of, of my whole circle. So I've got a fraction that's 80 degrees out of 360 degrees, yeah? Because I've only got 80 degrees of it. There are 360 degrees in a whole circle of which is times and four pi. So that is the circumference of my sector. Now obviously that's a lot to say in the morning when you've just fallen out of bed and great things that we actually call that the arc length. So we can find the arc length of a sector or of a whole circle by doing that. So there we go. So if I was to put that into my calculator, let's bring back up my calculator, gives me, all right, so let's use my fraction button on my calculator, 80, on 360, I'm gonna times that by two times pi, hit enter, oh, and what we notice is I have a decimal value. Now the great thing about this calculator is I can put this and change decimal to standard and hit enter, and it gives me my answer as an exact value as well. So they're telling me that I length for that circle is four pi on nine, or if I tap that and go back to decimal again and hit enter, it also gives me 1.396 uh, millimeters. Now, a word of warning, guys. Please realize that if I was looking at finding the perimeter of that whole shape, at the moment, the only thing you have found 
is this section here. That's an arc length because I've taken my whole section and just found a little bit of the outside. Do you see the trick here? This is where people get tricked. They would then have to add on this value and this value here to find the perimeter, yes. All right, so let's put this all together to find the arc length of the sector shown, yeah? So let's do this again, arc length of the sector shown. Do I have all the information I need? Yes, well we know the circumference of my whole circle is two times pi times radius, which is two times pi times seven. All I've done is formula, substitute, because my radius is seven, and I know that two times seven is 14, I can do that because we're all kissing together, and 14 pi, leaving an exact value. That's my whole circle. So I now know that my arc length is the fraction of the circle I've got. I've got 100 degrees out of 360 degrees of, I've got that fraction of my whole circle, which is 14 pi. And again, I can fire up my uh, calculator and we do, let's put it in a fraction, 100 on 360 and we're going to multiply that by 14 times pi, which gives me, well, I'm going to write the decimal value first, 12.22 meters. That's just my arc length. But if I tap that and go back to standard and hit enter, then I get 35 pi on 9, 35 pi on 9 as well. So actually using exact and decimals can be really, really helpful to me. Did they want anything else? Use a below formula to find the arc length. Now again, did I use the formula? Yes, I did, because my ang angle of sector divided by 360 was this section here, times by was there, and 2 times pi times radius was effectively where I got the 14 pi from. So I've just done it in a slightly different way. Once we know the arc length, then we can find the perimeter of this shape. And so now, remember, in the previous question, all we found was this section here. We just found that section there. That is not the perimeter. The perimeter is start at a point and walk all the way around the side. So bring it back up my CAS calculator. We knew that this arc length was 35 pi on nine. Now notice how leaving it an exact value now is gonna help us because we don't wanna round until our final answer. So we can say, therefore, three dots, the perimeter of that shape is going to be 35 pi on nine plus what? This length here, seven, plus this length here of seven as well. So I can now just go plus 14 on my calculator Hit enter, and you're going to notice the calculator there says, oh, 35 pi, 35 pi on 9 plus 14. Believe it or not, that is an exact value. Not particularly nice and helpful, is it? So actually, I'm going to turn around and say, well, can you just give me that as a decimal so that it makes some sense to me, which gives me 26.22 meters. And that is just my circumference. Exact and decimal, is there much more working out needed? As I said earlier in my thing, if I have already worked out my exact value somewhere in the question, it makes perfect sense to just leave it. Yes, yeah, so if I have 35 pi on nine as an answer partway through my working out, just leave it as 35 pi on nine. Get all the way to the end of the question. Your calculator is brilliant. It can remember numbers, you can, it's just fabulous, yeah? And then for your very, very final answer, as I did earlier when I showed you my calculator, then all I needed to do was find that value by hitting, uh, changing the mode. So again, if you remember, I went standard, gave me the value, hit it again, hit standard, turn it to decimal, and it gives me a decimal. No more working out really other than one extra line to write down your answer. Oh. Standard numbers are freaking awesome. Love them to bits, and, and in maths we use them ever such a lot. All right, so here's another example. Give the exact circumference perimeter of these shapes. Now, what does he mean by exact? Well, whenever you see the words exact, it wants it in terms of an exact answer. So, we are looking for the circumference of the shape. It's a circle, so we know the circumference is two times pi times radius. There's my formula. I substitute now two times four uh, pi by four. And that's the same as two times four by pi, because again, all those kissy kisses, just move them around. And that gives me eight pi. Do I need to put it in my calculator to get the decimal number? No, because it says, give the exact value. This stuff's freaking awesome.
What about this one? Oh, the exact circumference print of these shapes. Now, see the difference? How much of the shape have we got? Well, we've got three quarters of a circle. See that? There is three quarters of my circle, which I then need to add on that and add on that, those two and two. But as normal, let's find the circumference of my whole circle. So my circumference of my whole circle is two times pi times radius, which is two times pi times two, which we now know is four pi. That's my whole circle. But how much of my circle do I have? Well, I've got three quarters of it. So I now know that my arc length is equal to three quarters of four pi. So it's three quarters of that whole circle. Putting that into my calculator, funny enough, what I'm gonna end up with is three pi. Now that's because that four and that four cancel just to give me three pi. So I now know that that's my perimeter of my whole shape, yes? No, no it's not, why? Because we've now gotta add on those two extra sections we'd only found. So three pi is only this section here. I now need to add on two and add on two. So therefore, perimeter, and notice my working out, all of it that is important, is three pi plus two plus two, which is three pi plus four, and it didn't give me any units, so I'm gonna write the word units. Now, a lot of people make silly mistakes here because they go three pi plus four must be seven pi. It really isn't. Three pi's plus four cannot be simplified. If it was three pi plus four pi, it can be simplified, but in this situation, it just stays as it is, and that's an exact value. It wants exact, it doesn't want decimals. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already done so, head over to YouTube and subscribe. It just lets me know you're watching. If you can give your mates uh, an idea that this stuff is here, if you're finding it useful, great. Head over to YouTube, leave me a comment, just let me know it's useful, uh, and that you made it to the end of the video. I don't think many people make it to the end of these videos. I don't know why, too long maybe? Leave it to you. I'm done, I'll see you in another video. Take care guys, please stay safe. I'll see you soon.